All right, so later this week, I'm heading to Arizona to bike back the Queen's Ransom route to get away from these cold temperatures, the white stuff on the ground, and just have a good time with friends. I'm going with the exact same crew that pedaled the Sheltoe route in Kentucky a few years back, and today's video was somewhat spur of the moment, mainly because I'm really kind of happy with how our planning went for the Sheltoe, and I'm really excited and super happy with how the prep has gone for the Queen's Ransom route thus far. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about some of the pre-trip planning that not only helped us all kind of get on the same page for this trip, but will also make for a better overall experience once we're on trail. All right, let's do it. All right, so before we get into it, I just wanna mention that this video is supported in part by Salsa Cycles. By now, many of you have heard of three-pack mounts or brazons on many bikes. One of the first brands to adopt three-pack mounts was Salsa, as they were looking for more weight capacity to carry cargo. For them, that solution was the Anything Cage and Anything Cage HD. When you are seeking extra cargo or simply just need to find more room on your bike, the Anything Cage HD kit can help you store clothes, food, sleep kit, candy, beer, really whatever you need. It's a great addition to any bike packing kit. It's waterproof, sturdy, and durable. So to learn more about the Anything Cage HD kit, find the link right here or in the description below. All right, so how do you pick dates that work for everyone? This literally might be the biggest challenge to any trip, especially with a group. I honestly don't think that this Arizona trip actually would have happened without my buddy just booking flights and telling everyone that he was going to ride this route with or without us. Despite us talking about it for a few months prior, Mike pushed us a little bit by solidifying dates, booking airfare, and by booking the flight so far in advance for us, he helped us all assess our schedules, uh, talk to our families and book flights before things got a little too expensive. I'm also planning another trip with friends and we are currently voting on two sets of dates. This is another really good way to plan a trip uh, with a group in mind. I'm finding that the older I get, the more challenging it is to make plans with a group of people. So if you are young and hearing this, embrace your freedoms, go do all of the things. All of them. All right, so once the travel was booked, the text chain started, which is always fun. Um, and we had planned a video call. Since we all live in completely different corners of the United States, this call kind of helps us talk about the route logistics, food and water resupply, shared and non-shared gear, and comment on any concerns that we might have. It's not only a great opportunity to catch up with friends and or meet new ones, but it's also a really good idea to just hammer out important details. This particular video chat started with talking about arrival and departure times and where we're going to stay in Phoenix. Lucky for us, one of us in the group has parents that live in the area, so our plan was to make that base camp and actually amend the route a bit and start and finish from there. So we had to speak about how we were going to actually join the route from the start location. Obviously, if you are located in the same town, a uh, planning night or something could be arranged. I like to do a little bit of basic research before these meetups, uh, as I think coming prepared can help expedite these conversations. Otherwise, it could take a little bit longer. All right, so when we moved on to route logistics um, for both the Sheltoe trip and this trip, Austin totally outdid himself. Even the Queen's Ransom route being published on bikepacking.com, he went ahead and made a very detailed spreadsheet, color-coded and everything, looks great, uh, so that we could help understand potential daily mileage, food resupply points, where we can get water and potential camping spots. Not only is this a really helpful resource for us during the trip, but it's great to mentally prepare beforehand. Having this conversation about mileage also helped us understand everyone's ability. And this is a really good time to kind of comment on whether or not you have any concerns on the daily mileage. It's important for a group to set realistic mileage goals and understand if it's a no drop ride or not. In general, creating an itinerary with the weakest rider in mind is a good rule of thumb. So in this case, we decided on roughly 50 mile days. We also decided that we would likely bring three dinners to start and rely on services for the fourth dinner. We also spoke about water and most of us came to the conclusion that three liters would be a good bet. Uh, but the, that warmer temperatures could dictate us taking a little bit more capacity, so we'd have to keep an eye on the weather. All right, so I've mentioned this before, and I'm going to mention it <laughs> again, but there's simply no need to have everyone carry a tent, stove, repair kit, first aid kit, water filter. Sharing will help lighten and make more room in your bikepacking kit. 
And while you might not like the farts your tent mate releases in the middle of the night, I do think it's a small price to pay. <laughs> for the Chateau trip, we filled out a spreadsheet with shared gear items. Uh, but for this particular trip, we just kind of talked through it. For a group of five, three tents is usually a good choice. And mid tents work really well and are typically more spacious and lighter than a standard two person tent. So I tend to use those for shared sleeping quarters. Stay tuned, I have a video on bike packing shelters in the coming weeks. Thinking of a few other things here, um, you really only need probably three stoves for a group of five, and even that might be overkill. And while boiling water might take a little bit longer, it will definitely save space. One robust first aid kit should do the trick, and two detailed repair kits is really all you need. That being said, each individual should be carrying necessary parts for their particular bike, such as derailleur hangers, uh, quick links, depending on your, you know, your speed of your drivetrain, uh, brake pads, what have you. However, though, I should say that if you don't plan on riding as a group, that should definitely go into the planning process. All right, so that all leads to the conversation about other pieces of personal gear, such as bikes, tires, clothing, sleeping bags, and other items. Uh, like if Mike is going to bring his Bialetti or not. We really hope he does. We chatted about how Arizona trails are really rugged and having a durable sidewall tire is very important. We chatted about weather and what specific sleeping bags we had planned to bring, but also knew that this would likely change based on weather. So we would make a final call on weather-related items like clothing and sleeping bags once we got a little bit closer to the start of the trip. All right, so after the call, the group chat kind of gets pretty active, talking about borrowing sleeping bags, extra bike packing bags, and even talking about how we all plan to pack out our poop, something that we actually forgot to talk about on the phone. Remember, bike packing in the desert environments require you to pack out your poop, or at least use pit toilets. Simply just keeping open communication not only brings us together as a group, but it also gets us super excited and allows us to be dialed. Having a dialed crew makes for a much more enjoyable experience once you are out on the trail. As we get together the day before our send off day, we again talk through gear, especially our shared gear. Like, do we really need five hand pumps or how much food is everyone actually bringing? Or should we actually carry a little bit extra isobutane fuel just in case? This is an inevitable conversation and it's not a bad idea to actually do a verbal pack list shout out to the group. Like, all right, I've got tent, poles, stakes, sleeping bags, stove, uh, fuel, water, filter, and so on. So in the end, having open communication and talking through goals will help make for a more enjoyable trip. So if you have any good pre-trip planning methods for groups, please leave them in the comment section below. As always, thank you all so much for watching and until next time, pedal further.